Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is our second week where we hear from John 6. If you will recall last week, we heard about the five loaves and the two fish that Jesus multiplied to feed 5,000. A great, incredible sign. An amazing sign. One of the seven or eight signs in the Gospel of John that he points to. I want to back up first, though, to the book of Exodus from our reading this morning. And the Israelites are traveling from Egypt throughout the desert, and they're on their way to Mount Arab, Horeb, rather, I'm sorry. And as they're journeying, they're, they're murmuring, they're complaining, they're hungry. Why would you bring us out here in the desert just to die? So Moses intervenes, beseeches the Lord, and the Lord rains down manna, heavenly bread. We hear from our psalm today. As David reflects, the psalmist David reflects, he rained down manna upon them for their food. He gave them heavenly bread. Man ate the bread of angels, food sent to them in abundance. And he brought them to his holy land, to the mountains, to his right his right hand had won. Now the manna that was rained down was rained down every single day. And the Israelites could only eat of it for that day. And if they kept it, it would actually spoil. It would go rotten and be infested with worms. Except on, Sunday, except on the Sabbath day, which would be Saturday. Except the Sabbath day. So on Friday, they took up two days' worth and kept it and preserved it. And they baked cakes and they preserved it. And they gathered in what are called Omar jars. Well, throughout the Exodus, the Lord also commanded them to keep one Omar jar as a sign and a symbol of how he fed them throughout the desert on their journey to the promised land. So there's one preserved Omar jar that would go into the Ark of the Covenant as the Israelites continue to journey into the Holy Land of Jerusalem. A great sign of God feeding his people on their journey throughout the desert. But they had to seek this food out on a daily basis, and it was for their physical sustenance. We go to the gospel today. Jesus had just fed the 5,000. He just performed this incredible miracle in feeding this 5,000 with bread and fish. And they come to the other side, And he says, amen, amen, I say to you, you're looking for me not because you saw signs, because you ate the loaves and were filled. You came because your physical needs were satiated, and you want to fulfill more of your physical need and your physical thirst. But I'm the bread that has come down from heaven. And he says, seek For the food that does not perish, that endures to eternal life, that the Son of Man will give you. And then they say to him, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? And Jesus answered and said, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. That you believe. And that word for belief is pisteo in Greek which could mean trust or entrust. It's not just saying yes, but it's really receiving to your core, to your being, and the one who God had sent. And then they turn around and say, but what sign do you have about this? Work another miracle. Show us another sign. Our ancestors rained down manna in the desert. They rained, they rained down, so they're referring, and he knows that they're referring to Moses. He gave them bread from heaven to eat, and Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. 
The bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus says, I am that bread. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Jesus is coming, and he's come down from heaven, brothers and sisters, as the true manna, as the true bread of life, to satiate the hunger and the desire that we have in our hearts, the thirst that we have for something more. Were we made just to eat and drink and be sustained in our physical being? Are you simply physical? Are you simply an animal? Or are you made in the likeness of God and in his image? And you have spiritual being as well. That you're also spiritual and he's made you to thirst for him and to be in communion with him. To be in relation with him and deep relation with him. Who is the bread of life? One, two, three. Who is the word of God? One, two, three. Is this book only the word of God? But is it the word of God? Amen. There's much debate as we go further in the Gospel of John. Is the bread of life discourse referring in a spiritual sense to Jesus? Or is it referring to him and the Eucharist? And what is our answer to be? Is it spiritual? Is it a spiritual sense? What we just heard in the gospel where he says, this is the work of God that you believe in the one he sent. That you believe, that you believe. When Jesus is saying, I'm the bread of life, whoever comes to me will never hunger, whoever believes in me will never thirst, is that spiritual or is it Eucharist? Both. Good answer, Catholics. It's, a, it's not an either or. It's not a spiritual interpretation or a literal interpretation. This here, Jesus is actually wanting to engender faith in him first. When we get to verses 49 through 59 and beyond, that's called the Eucharistic discourse. So he's wanting to engender faith and belief in his apostles and his disciples and his followers, not just to seek what satisfies the body, but to seek and hunger. And, and what you seek and hunger and thirst for, you will receive in me in the bread of life. How do we receive and eat the bread of life, brothers and sisters? In what form? Yes. Absolutely. Is that the only form? Do we not feast on the bread of life when we feast on the word of God and Holy Scripture? When we pray? When we go in the quiet of our room and spend time with him? Yes, we're feasting on the bread of life. It wouldn't be enough just to come and receive Eucharist, as powerful as Eucharist is once a week. Brothers and sisters, our lives have to be oriented to feast on the bread of life constantly. Constantly. And a life oriented to Jesus so that our thirst and our hunger truly can be satisfied. Because it's only in him that we're going to be fulfilled. We look to all kinds of substitutes, right? And sometimes we get off the path and we start to look and we get diverted by maybe sports or shopping or social media or all these distractions and diversions, the news, all the news that comes at us. And we start feasting on that stuff or we start overindulging in food or drink or any other kind of thing that we can overindulge in the flesh. But it never satisfies us. We need to feast on the bread of life in every form that he comes to us. 
And even just like last night when we were out for the transformation night, the power that was out there. Thank you to all who participated in making it happen. Chosen was on fire. It was beautiful. Brothers and sisters, we need the transformation of our minds that St. Paul talks about in Romans 12, 2. And we heard also in the book of a letter to Paul to the Ephesians today, be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new self created in God's way and righteousness and holiness of truth. And w- by consuming the bread of life in all those forms, sacred scripture, our prayer, rosaries, our devotion, be- our good works of mercy, all- feeding Jesus in the poor, all those ways are feeding on the bread of life and they transform and renew our minds and our lives to recreate us truly in a restored image and likeness of God, none less than Jesus Christ himself. Feast on every form of the bread of life, brothers and sisters. Consume the bread of life and have joy and have it to the full.